Hello, welcome to Do It Yourself with Wayne. Today we're going to install an electric fence around my garden. Now I did a video about this a few years ago and it has done well, but there was, I uh, had a lot of comments asking questions that I didn't answer in that video. So I wanted to do a new video to answer more of the questions. So uh, I have a lot of trouble with animals. Uh, I have rabbits, squirrels, raccoons, possums, fox, deer, and God only knows what all else might come wandering through at night. And it's, my garden's getting to the point that I'm going to start having trouble with stuff disappearing if I don't do something about it. And i just like to say electric fences, if you do them right, they don't kill animals. When, when an animal touches the wire, they don't understand it, it scares them, they stay away from it. That's, that's all. That's all it does. It just scares them. They don't come back around it. Uh, I have seen people, and I've heard of people, that put their electric fence or their fence up and use electric wire just straight from the house to it. People, please don't do that. That is extremely dangerous. Uh, you can hurt people very seriously, possibly even kill people if you do that. So please don't do that. If you're going to do an electric fence, get the proper fence charger and do it right. Now this is the first thing we're going to show installing today. This is my fence charger. It does plug into electric uh, 110 volt. You can get battery powered ones, you can get solar powered ones, but make sure you get a proper uh, charger for your fence. There's only two wires, one for ground and one for your hot wire. So these things are really simple to hook up, just two wires. And of course your power cord if you have one like this or you know, battery or solar. Now for your wire, I started using this uh, braided wire like this uh, because it's a lot easier to see, not only for animals, but for me as well. Because uh, you can easily back into this thing if you ain't careful. And trust me, you'll know if you back into it. Now traditionally, I've always used the aluminum wire like this. It comes in a lot of different sizes of wire. They all work. The only difference is the smaller diameter wires will stretch more. And over time, you'll have trouble with your fence sagging more with the smaller diameter wire. Now the larger diameter, you may still have that problem, but it won't be as much. I've also got a lot of different kinds of insulators. We'll talk about that when we start putting the post up. I got the fiberglass post, I got plastic, I got this big metal post. I'll be showing all of those as we move along. But for me, I really like these fiberglass posts. I think they'll last a lot longer if you take care of them. The plastic ones, I've used a good many of those in the past and after a couple of years, the sun just bakes them and, and the plastic just breaks and you throw them away. So I'm going with the fiberglass ones from now on. Uh, you will need some of the heavier metal posts for your corner or something to secure your corners because you can't use these for a corner post because they're not strong enough to hold the tension that would be on them. Uh, you're going to need some tools. I got a pair of needle nose pliers. I can cut wire as well as use the points to bend wire if necessary. I got a rubber hammer. This is actually a dead blow hammer, but it works good for these fiberglass and plastic posts because you can drive them without damaging them. Don't use a big hammer on these posts because you'll damage them. Now for your big metal post, you need something heavier. Uh, a lot of people have an axe, you can use that, you just use the back side of it, you can drive them. Uh, you'll see me using my post driver, I like this thing, but I use it fairly often so I didn't mind paying for it. But if you don't have one, an axe, or even a large hammer, will work just fine for driving your larger post. Now one question I did have numerous times in the old video was how do you do a gate? Uh, this is one of the things that you can use for a gate. I'll be talking about this later as well as some other options. So that's about it for the stuff we're going to be installing. So let's get on with it. Now in my case, the first thing I'm going to do is install the fence charger. And I install it, install it out here in my yard close to where my fence is going to be. And I got this piece of wood, I've used it for a number of years, and I just drive it in the ground a bit. Something like that will be fine. I've used this before, so I've still got my screws here. Just hangs on the screws. Take my screwdriver, tighten them down a little bit. They don't need to be real tight, just snug them up. And, uh, that's what I do. Now how you match yours can be under the edge of a building and a and whatever, but it needs to be dry. Now I know this is out in my yard, 
So the way I keep it dry, I do that. I've done that for years and it's worked well. Now the next thing I'm going to do is install my corner posts and I'm using these fiberglass rods and like I said, they're not good for a corner post because you got to support them. And I will be doing that. I'll show you that a little bit later, but I'm going to go ahead and put them in where I want my corners. But when you install your corner post, think about how far your wire is going to be from your garden. I like to install mine. I'll go ahead and drive this in a little bit, about like that. Where the wire is going to be right here, but I've got room between the wire and my garden to work without bumping against the wire. Now, I always turn the wire off, or nearly always, when I'm working in my garden, but on those odd occasions, I don't want to bump into it. So I leave myself plenty of walkway, because this wire will be going straight across there and straight up through there. So I leave myself enough room between the wire and the garden to do, my, to do you know, what I need to do in the garden. Now, I go ahead and do that on all four corners. Now, what I'll do next to support these posts is I take a heavy duty post and I come out from that at a right angle. I guess that's the right angle. Um, if you think about where, you know, I got a wire this way and a wire that way, I'm coming at an angle straight out this way from that post. And I'll come out six or eight inches, something like that. And I'll drive this in the ground. Now what I do with this post is when I, before I put my wire up on these, I will connect the wire from here to this post. And this heavy duty post will give this post the support that it needs for the corners. Um, I could use a post like this that's sufficient for putting insulators on at my corners, but I just don't have them, but I've got some old posts like this. If you got the good metal post where you can put an insulator on it, you could just drive to one post and be done with that. So there's different ways you can do that, but if you use this for your corners, you got to have something else out behind it to give it support. Uh, if you're going to have your garden in a permanent place, you might want to even put a, a nice wooden post there that would be there permanently. But I always take this up every year, so I use these posts so I can pull them back up. Now I've got this post installed. It's kind of lined up with that post behind me, but uh, that's from a weather station. But anyway. I got two different kinds of insulators. I'll put pictures of these up in the corner somewhere so, so you can see them. But this style here, it has a little thing that screws on the back end of it and I can just slide it over the post, tighten that down and it stays where I want it. This style here is an older style. It's got a little wire that goes through it. And then here again, I just slip it down over the post Tighten up the little thumb screw thing on the end of it, and it tightens down. I turn these around so you can see them a little better there. But uh, either side, either type works just fine, and I've got both, and I'll be using both. So that's what I'm using for the insulators. Now, as far as the height of my wire, I'll start out with one pretty close to the ground. You don't want to get too close because if your wire touches the ground, it will ground it out, and your fence becomes ineffective. I'll bring one up probably six inches or so from that. That'll help take care of the smaller animals that might think about jumping over it. And then I'll come on up closer to the top for another one that'll help me with deer and stuff like that, the larger animals. So anyway, I'm gonna go around now and put my insulators on my four corners and get ready to put the wire on them. Now I showed you two different kinds of wire to use and different insulators. Now this insulator, if you're just running a straight row you can just do that number and it'll stay in there. But if you're doing your ends and when you're starting and stopping your wire, you got to do something different. You can still go through there, but with the wire, you can just take and twist it a couple times and it'll stay there. That will not come loose. Now, if you're using the, the braided wire like I'm, I'm going to use this year, and like I said, I started using it last year and I really like it, that doesn't work. On your straight runs, you can still put it in there like that. It'll stay in there for you. 
But if you're doing an end, if you just twist it around a few times, that's not going to hold. It'll just pull out. You actually have to tie a knot. Now, two half hitch will work fine if you know what that is, but just some kind of knot so it can't come loose. You can't just twist it around like you can with the aluminum wire. Uh, so it is a little bit more aggravating because you have to tie a knot instead of just twisting it around. But I do like this braided stuff because it's a lot more visible. So now I'm gonna run my wire all the way around. I'm just gonna do one strand for starters and then we'll fill in. Now at this point, I've run a strand of wire I braided around on the lowest insulators. But I still got to support these because if I put any wire up here, it's going to do that. So I, I got a piece of my strength, the length of my aluminum wire. And uh, fortunately, these posts here have little holes in them. I'm going to do this number and just twist this aluminum wire a few times. And uh, I'll cut it off short here a little bit. But I always take my ends and tuck them in somewhere where they... Uh, can't hurt people because if you're not careful you'll get you know the, the end of these wires will stick out and next thing you know somebody's getting poked or stabbed or something but I go around I do that to all four of my corners so that when I put wire up here pulling that way and this way it won't pull that over so that's what these posts are for and that's how I use them and as I said earlier if you have a real sturdy post that you can put insulators on you don't have to do this you just have that one corner post with insulators on it and go from there. At this point, we're getting about finished up. Uh, I got my three lines run. Uh, I decided to run my aluminum wire for the middle one uh, because I've got a lot more of that. And the braided wire, I like it because it's a lot more visible, but it's also more expensive. So I ran that on the top and the bottom and I ran that aluminum wire, which is cheaper from my middle strand. And uh, on the post over here behind me that you can't see, I ran a wire from here to here to the bottom. So all three strands are connected over at that corner. You gotta have all three strands or lines connected somewhere for all three of them to be hot. Uh, all your wires will be hot. That is a question that I had uh, in my previous video. Um, the shock goes from the earth the, the ground itself to the wire. So if a bird lands on the wire, he won't get shocked. But uh, if a rabbit or a squirrel or whatever comes up to it and he touches his nose to it or his foot, he's gonna get shocked because he's touching the ground and the wire. Uh, so anyway, I, I moved my charger cause from where I had it earlier cause I wanted it closer to my fence and uh, put a little post here with an insulator. Uh, this is the hot wire here goes here and it goes up here and connects to that lead. That gets the, the charge to my fence. Obviously, it's not, not plugged in right now, uh, obviously. Uh, and my ground wire goes over here to this. Now, I'll show you in a minute why I put my ground wire or my ground post right here. But I just took a ground wire from here, a piece of the aluminum wire, put it over here to my ground post. I went around the post, oh, four or five times. It doesn't really matter. And put a little clamp on it to clamp it real tight to that post to get a good ground. Now this post also, I don't know if you noticed how tall it was before, but it's probably a good three feet in the ground. Uh, your ground post needs to be pretty deep to make sure you get a good earth ground. So that's why you drive it kind of deep. Just make sure that wherever you drive it that deep, you know there's no underground power or water lines or anything like that. So anyway, that finishes everything else up except for plugging it in and putting my bucket over the charger. So now I'm gonna plug it in and we'll show you how to test it. Now for testing the wire to make sure it's hot. And I'm gonna show you, uh, this is where I was just sitting. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move my camera around and I'm gonna zoom in right there to the top of my ground post. Now I put that ground post there for a reason. I want you to watch this when it gets close to the wire. Now notice, 
The only thing I'm going to touch is this post. I will not be touching the wire because that is what will shock me. But the post is at ground potential. Now watch when I get close to the wire. You see that little shock? That's what the animals get if they get close to that. So several thousand volts, but it's extremely low amperage. So it won't kill them. It just scares the heck out of them and they leave. Now one thing that numerous people asked about in my previous video was how you do a gate. Well, there's a lot of ways to do a gate. You can have, um, like I've got here, I set up, now this is not a gate that I'm going to use, it's just for an example. But if you got one of these things, and I put a picture up here in the corner, uh, this end is spring loaded. And uh, you just take your wire and make a little loop here on your post. Ideally, this would be the side going to your charger. And out that way would be your fence that you don't want to be electrified anymore. And when you pull this thing, if you see it won't really reach, if you pull it, the spring in here will give, and it keeps tension on this to make sure you get a good connection. But that's a real easy way to make a, a, a gate. You just do that, and the gate's open. If your charger is on toward this side, all this over here is not hot anymore. You can lay it down, whatever. Uh, if you need more than one of these, you can have more than one. Just remember not to touch anything back here when this is hooked up, because this will be hot. Just grab it here, pull it that away, and up, and it comes right off. And now this end won't be hot for you. To hook it back up, same thing, just a little tension. And like I said, you can have two of these or three of them if you want to. Uh, generally speaking, one is adequate because once animals find out that this fence is gonna shock them, they're not gonna come through right here anyway. They're not gonna go under this because they don't understand the fence. They just know they get shocked if they come over here. Uh, now, another thing you can do, and I've done, we used to have horses, and I used electric fences a lot with the horses and the goats. Um, I would have you know, two sizable posts not these, but like large wooden post. And I'd have a physical, like a pipe gate here or something that would swing. And I just had the fence come up to one side, had the fence on the other side, and you can get stuff to run your electric wire underground. And I would do that to run it down underground and back up to that side. So I just have my swinging gate to go through and not have to worry about this. That works better if you got, you know, goats or something that could go under this um, but like I said, once they learn this fence is going to shock them, they're not likely to come right through here because they don't understand it. So gates are easy, uh, and that's a couple different things you can do. So there you go. Electric fence is just that easy. It takes a little bit of time, costs a little bit of money, but it can save you a lot of grief with your garden. Uh, just a little quick funny little story. I've actually been in my backyard before and have a tomato fall out of my oak tree. I'm pretty sure it didn't grow there on its own. So I get tired of the, the critters carrying off my, my tomatoes and my cucumbers and eating my corn and stuff. Electric fence solves all that problem without killing the animals. It just scares them away. That's all it does. Uh, if you have any questions, you know, leave us a comment. If you like the video, leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. Uh, if you have questions, you know, leave in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. And uh, at this point, I'd just like to say we really appreciate you visiting. Do it yourself with Wayne, and we hope you have a great day.